Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today is longtime listener, poet laureate, and Taya master, Anne-Marie Young. This is your Daily Dose of Happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Anne-Marie, there's something I got to tell you about. Now, as you know, I've been dealing with uh, various kinds of um, minor physical stuff, headache, you know, chronic headache and things like that, that I, on you know, low grade, That's but right. I'm trying to deal with that nutritionally. I've been seeing an ND about it and so forth. And I discovered something really cool that I started today that I wanted to share with you and everybody else, kind of a hack, because okay. anytime you're doing anything nutritionally oriented, right, you need to be able to figure out what your nutritional input is, you know, how much you're taking into your body. And, you know, people usually recommend things like keeping a food diary or stuff like that. And it's all very time consuming, very cumbersome. You have to do a lot of stuff in order to make that happen. I found a really easy way to track all this stuff. Artificial How? intelligence. Really? Little, you know, the chat GPT. I, I tell it, just keep track of my food. I'm going to give you my food intake for the day. You just keep track of it and calculate all the nu nutrients and so forth. And it does it. That's genius. It's so That's freaking genius. cool. You can actually see throughout the day, you know, how many of the different vitamins and minerals and so forth you're at, you've actually taken in just by telling it, well, I just ate a peach, put it in peach. And it just adds in the peach. <laughs> this is That's the best. A, there's, so many there's so many apps out there now that you've just defunct. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, well, I was realizing that because if, Artificial, I mean, there's a lot of controversy, of course, with artificial intelligence. A lot of people are, you know, have some fears about it, and understandably so. Yeah. But man, there's some cool stuff associated with it. That you can do this, like, and, and I don't even have to write a program. It's just there. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I love the fact that you're just discovering more and more AI. And you know what the secret is? Bring more you joy just try there. it. You just try stuff. Yeah. You, you just get the thing and you just ask questions. And the more you ask questions, the more you learn about it. You, you get the sense of where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are, what it does well, what it does mm -hmm. poorly, because it does make mistakes. I mean, it makes lots of mistakes and you have to kind of get used to that. But once you get it, it's almost as if somebody just reached inside your head and opened up a door. That's what it feels yeah. like. All of a sudden, possibilities open that didn't even occur to you a day ago. Wow. Justin. Well, well done. That's brilliant. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we already, we did a, a, a show one week where you and I were kind of exploring AI. So now you, now you've got an, your next round, you've, you've got AI 2.0 to play with, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fun to find creative things to use it for rather than just yeah. being a work, work, serious work. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's good. It, in fact, it's occurring to me, you want to track something, anything? AI is your that AI is your man. You <laughs> need to do the tracking. I mean, it's just so easy. You, you have the app. You say, "Hey, keep track of this for me." Okay, uh, it's it's literally it's it's three seconds. It's crazy. <laughs> so yeah, wanted to make sure I shared that hack with everybody. So with that, thank you. That's business amazing. Out of the way. What's that, Emery? I said thank you. That's amazing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I have to share it. So with that out of the way, I want to introduce our guest today. Her name is Arlene Miller. And Arlene is like, like many people who've come onto the show, she's been through plenty of ups and downs, but she's also found her own set of cool hacks over the years that have helped her both uh, with her own clients and uh, with people in general, and not to mention in her own life. And we're going to see if we can try to get her to tell her what, tell us what some of those hacks are today. So first of all, hello, Arlene. Welcome to the program. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here, Walton and Marie. I'm really grateful to be here with the two of you. We're glad to have great you. To see and, and you. Now, I hope you don't mind that we're trying to take, we're going to extract as many hacks as possible from you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm a hack expert. I sort of like going within and finding answers inside of myself, but some hacks. But those are hacks. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't I'm, know that. Anytime no, you're going within, that's a hack. That's okay, get, great. That's getting quick information. What, what's a hack? A hack is getting quick information that you can put right to use right away. Okay. I will be there that's for you. Yeah. So, so give us a little bit of your backstory. Tell us about how you got to be the Arlene Miller today. Um, well, the short version, so my, my, our leadership stays awake here and happy and smiling is um, when I was about 15, I decided that I wanted to be an attorney. Hmm. First one in my family. Um, and I did. I became an attorney. I've had two um, private practices, a solo practice, 
practice in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio, and a um, partnership in a small boutique firm in a suburb of Denver called Longmont, Colorado. Um, sold that business with my partner a few years ago. And while I was still an attorney in that partnership, I got a diploma in um, mentoring and coaching and a diploma in transformational holistic counseling and certified as a meditation facilitator. And I just had been practicing law for a long time. Wow. And I really, I enjoyed it, but I really needed a change. And so started my own business, dual consultancy, and I get to work with a women as a work-life balance coach and men and women as a transformational mentor. And that really makes my heart sing. And I guess that's the short story of how I got here today. But we like anything that makes your heart sing. That's part of yeah. what makes the conversation so good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So give us a little bit more about what it is that makes your heart sing when you're doing, when you're helping people in these ways. Well, when I first opened my um, law practice, when I left, um, I was like an associate in, in a, a small law firm for one attorney um, for about three years before I opened my own business. And I opened my own business with like there's two other attorneys, like a little Main Street place, nothing showy at all. There was a, an employment agency there. I was really excited. I was married at the time. Um, and I immediately found out about a couple of weeks after I opened, you know, put out my shingle that I was pregnant. So I've been a working mother for my whole life. I mean, my son is grown now and I have grandkids. And it, I really wish that I'd had like a coach, like a work-life balance coach mm -hmm. like me when I was younger, because it was really hard, you know? How do you start a business? How do you run everything? How do you be a mom and a wife and all the everything to everybody yeah. and still keep your sanity and take care of yourself? And I oh, managed. you want that too? I, oh, wait a minute, is yes, that a yes. bit? I mean, Come on. <laughs> yes, I think that's a part of the, the joy within. That's that's a reasonable request. So it would have been nice to have someone like me. And so it really gives me joy to help, you know, women that are younger than me. Um, I joined recently the, the Colorado Women's Bar Association, even though I'm not actively um, practicing law as an allied member, so that I could do that. You know, to the, to the extent that they want me, I'm the only grandmother there, but... Um, I love it. They're just a wonderful group of women and it's another kind of singing heart kind of thing. Well, you're certainly tapping into something that not just women, men, children, you name it, everybody experiences at one time or another that challenge of how do you balance all of the things that you feel like you need to do in your life um, for good reason. I mean, we, we have a very strong need to make sure that our needs are met, our basics are, are met. We have a place to live. We have food. We have clothing. We have all that stuff, which means usually we're having to go get a job someplace or we're having to figure out what the income source is. And then the income source situation becomes complicated. And then we start throwing ourselves more into that. And then all of a sudden we want to have a family, but now there's not enough time to have a family. And it just kind of spirals. Yeah. I, I, is there anybody on the planet other than somebody who has it handed to him as a son of a billionaire? Other than that person, I mean, that's pretty much our story is dealing with that. Situation. Yeah, and it's not that I don't like wet men. I love men, and I, I'm like a transformational men mentor for men and women. Um, it's just I just have so much of affinity because I get it. You know, I really feel it on like a cellular level what women are going through. And uh, yeah, I don't know anyone on the planet. I, there are there's got to be some rich people out there that don't. There are, yeah. this, but. Um, yeah, they're they not have their own set of them. problems, interestingly enough. Yeah, but we, I'm, didn't sure they do. I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely correct. Yeah, I, I, one of my uh, other co hosts, Joel Elston, actually works with clients who include billionaires and, and children of billionaires. And, and the stories he's told me about the children absolutely they, they rent your heart because they literally have everything handed to them, so they never have to deal with the kinds of struggles that everybody else has to. And so they end up trying to create struggles because it's kind of a built-in thing. We as human beings look for struggle as a way to grow. All that's been taken away from them because it was handed to them. Right. And it's kind of an interesting inverted problem that they deal with, kind of kind of the opposite of what the rest of us have to deal with in a sense. Yeah. And even though I'm not in that class, I had that it, and I had that earlier in my life, like when my son was in a teenager, he has a, he had ADHD and mm -hmm. um, I was like a hovering mother. And I wasn't letting, I was trying to not have him fail. And the best thing I ever did was have a mentor of mine say, Arlene, this is really arrogant. You need to give him a chance to have those experiences in life. And I stepped back. And yet he fell, and fell, uh, and fell, and kind of it, fell on his face a few times, but he's really doing awesome now. And I feel that that was the gift that I gave him, no matter how hard that was as his mother. Yeah. And I am so grateful for that mentor 
uh, saying that to me because I, I really didn't see it. I really didn't see it. It's hard to see it when you're, I mean, Anne Marie's in the middle of it. You're raising, how old are your daughters now? So I've got a 12 year old and an eight year old. And, yeah. you know, there, there are, you do, you just want to wrap them in bubble wrap and just <laughs> like, you know, when they're, when they're hurting, you're hurting. But actually, yeah, absolutely right. You do have to let them work these skills out on problem solving, on dealing with emotions, whatever kind of emotions they are. It, it doesn't help them. It's a bit like the butterfly in the cocoon. You help it get out. It hasn't got the strong enough wings to fly. So I, I, I agree. It's hard as a mum to do, but the kids do need to go through this. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I'm glad you're you're there, too, because it took me a long. It took me longer to get there and had to someone, you know, give that tough love to me by the School of Hard Knocks. But, yeah, I'm eternally grateful. So there's an example of the kind of hack we were we're talking about earlier that, that's a hack let you know let your kid fail it i mean it's so simple to say it's not so easy to implement you have to kind of go through it but it's valuable yeah it's mm -hmm. so valuable it's heart-wrenching in a while you know you know when you're going through it you know because you don't want them to have the experiences yeah. that you had of falling on your face um but it's actually a good experience because it builds i don't know something inside of themselves and afforded to define what they what their real purpose is in life and my son eventually did find that so very grateful for that he wouldn't listen to me but he listened to some other family members which is always <laughs> funny with your mother and a son but um it doesn't matter how it happened i'm grateful and even with that going on i mean it's not like the mother doesn't have any influence on that because she does regardless of what she intends or does not intend to do she still has the influence and i, and I believe that the, the there's an old-fashioned word that kind of describes what that that uh, uh, that process or that uh, that end result, maybe that's the better way to say it, the end result that, that comes about as the child develops that. It's called character. And, and character's huge. That That's literally how you develop character is by going through that kind of stuff. Yeah. But when we're developing character, it doesn't feel so great sometimes. But just, no. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's why they're called yeah. characters, right? <laughs> because... I guess so. I guess that's right. You're, you've got to be right there, Walt. <laughs> so, okay, very good. Well, that gives us an idea of uh, where you came from. Now, you said that you work primarily with women. Now, what, 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 what's your focus right now? I mean, we, we have an idea of who you'd like to work with, but, but what specifically do you focus on? Well, I focus on whatever they need, you know, because okay. where, uh, where a person is in their life, and for as far as how old their kids are, their career, whether we're a stay at home mom, whether we're a working mom, um, you know, it, it's individual. And um, with coaching, you know, we, we know that the client has the answers inside of them. So my job is just to hold a big judgment free, loving space for them, ask powerful questions, share some insights and know what their goals are, and where they want to move to and work with them like that. You know, if it's men and women, men or women and it's um, transformational mentoring. I'm doing more sharing my wisdom, you know, because some people just want that mode and see, you know, they have the opportunity to work with it, come back to me and we see how that goes. So um, those are the two main things I do. I also do something that's a little woo woo out there. Um, okay. I, do, I do soul readings. Oh. So um, with psychic tarot oracle cards, I'm not a psychic or anything, but what I do is I heart connect with whoever's working with me and we can do it online. And um, they draw cards and I draw cards and I have a way to do that when they're not in my presence. And I just share with them like the opportunities that are open to them, the challenges that they're facing and some simple tools that they can use to move around them with more grace, ease and flow. And I just find with adult learners, it's really helpful because even if we're having a coaching conversation and mentoring conversations, having that kind of um, visual experience and knowing that they have a buy-in because they're picking the cards as well seems to be uh, really powerful for people. Which is a good thing. Uh, I, Anne Marie, I'm not sure if you're seeing what I'm seeing, but uh, we've been having some interesting connection issues going on here. So <laughs> if, if for whatever reason I kind of drop out of the conversation, I'll let you kind of drop back in and take control of it until I'm able to, to reconnect. It's one of those technology days where we're not really sure exactly what's going to happen. But that's what makes things so fun. I've right? had that all day today. Well, my internet has literally been so unstable every time I've been on a call. Okay, this well, thank you for one of those days. Now, now we all get to experience it. This is a wonderful yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you're so right, Arlene. And uh, I, I want to uh, kind of play on that a little bit more. First of all, tell us a little bit more about 
the specific terms that you're using to describe each one of those. Um, uh, I'm particularly interested in the transformative mentoring, but both of them, what the terminologies, describe what those terminologies actually mean for us. So transformational mentoring is like I've been on a, like a, a deep spiritual path for about the past 22 years, but, you know, I'm learning how to go within, um, how to work with, because um, what I'm working with is to have more and more psychological clarity, because if I am a, I'm like a healer in a way, if I'm working with coaching and mentoring. And so I'm only as good as the vessel I am. So if, beautiful light and love of source is flowing through me to help somebody else. And the inside of my cylinder that I am is filled with crap and mud and tar and everything like that. What I share with people is not going to be so great. So I believe and I feel that it's really important to have really strong psychological clarity in addition to be, you know, loving and caring and holding a judgment free space for people. So what I've been working with for years is to develop more of that psychological clarity and some of the tools and skills that I've learned along the way, I share it with other people in addition to like to meditation and, and breath work skills and mindfulness skills, because that just helps to bring us back down to a level that we can handle what's going on in our life. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely that's so the, important. That, that's the challenge right there is dealing with the stuff day to day because yeah. I mean, it's, it's one thing to read a, a self-help book and understand, well, you got to do A, B, and C, but it's another thing to live it. Yeah. And that's- Yeah, we only really get it. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say that application is, is, is the whole thing, but that's just me talking on, so go ahead. <laughs> no, I agree with you because that's why that stuff often doesn't help because people become very heady, heady about it and want to apply it from their head. But the only way you really get the learning and the knowing is you get something in your heart, like, like a penny drops and you go, oh my gosh, People have been telling me that for 15 years, but finally I get it. I really feel it. Yeah. And that's when the transformation can happen with you or me or with the people that I work with. And so you're spot on when it comes to those self-help books and why it's so important. I always share that feeling is healing and help people to work with that. Feeling is healing. I like that. I like that too. Isn't that good? Yeah. Because if, if, you, if you're not feeling it, you're not dealing with it, are you? Right. No. And if you're not dealing with it, you're not growing. Right. No, you're a, you're a dirty cylinder. Yes. <laughs> the, the cylinder seems to be the icon of choice today. <laughs> <laughs> but I liked it because it made perfect sense. You know, if, if, mm. if you're not dealing with this yourself, then how, how can you flow that through to other people? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And like you said, Arlene, you've got to be in the space to provide to somebody else, which means you have to be able to hold them in that, that yeah. safe space you were describing. Right, right. So like before I get on a call, I make sure I'm aligned to love, centered in my heart, holding a nice big judgment-free space, putting anything that's in my life on the shelf over there. Mm -hmm. So it's there when I leave, but it's not going to be a part of our conversation. And, you know, just be the best listener I can be because it's a real gift for people. Most people don't receive the gift of having someone that's just fully present with them. And therefore, then without thinking about what you're going to say when they're talking. And to have that kind of presence with someone and to feel that gift builds safety and trust and can lead to like their own like healing experience. Have you ever done podcasting? Um, no, I have never been a podcaster, but I have gone, I've been on a lot of podcasts recently. I just joined um, Podmast and I've been on like 22 of them. Right. So I've done a lot. Because what you're describing is very much what you do as a podcast host. Oh, cool. Well, that's yeah. good to know. Thank well, you. Let, let's, let's, let, me, let me qualify that. It's what you do if you want to be effective as a podcast host. Not all podcast yeah. hosts are necessarily effective. So I should, you know, kind of put that one aside for a moment. Yeah. But if you want to be a good yeah. podcast host where you're having an interesting show, that's exactly what you have to do. You have to create the space and just leave it open for, for the guests to do their thing. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, so something you new every day. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you. It's a lot of work to do a podcast from what I've investigated. So that's not on the front burner right now, but I do love coming on your show and other shows. So thanks. Understandable. Yeah. I, I certainly went through my own uh, ups and downs getting this one going because I, I, I got it going before podcasting was a thing in a big way. So I had to figure out how to do most of it myself based on I have an IT background so that actually helped but if it wasn't for that I don't think I could have done it because we didn't have zoom we didn't have YouTube barely existed um yeah I mean most of the tools that we have available 
didn't exist at that point. So you literally had to make the whole thing up as you were going along. Wow. Well, that's it's impressive. <laughs> it's a lot easier today. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how you bring in people like Anne. Anne Marie's actually a longtime listener. She listened for a number of years. I, I put out a call at one point that I wanted to, to bring some more uh, co-hosts in, and she volunteered and kind of got cold feet. And then I pulled her in the rest of the way, and she stayed. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going nowhere. I love no, it. No, <laughs> I love that too. I love that because you just yeah. meet such interesting people and you just get to learn but and I imagine your clients come to you and they just do they do, you, do they usually have some source of connection with them with themselves in the spiritual or is, can they come brand new most people have some connection they have, they're like they feel like I did like I was a round peg trying to fit in square holes and where the heck do I fit in the world um but they're going to come in all different levels but usually they have to have some sort of affinity with me in order to mm. work with me. You know, we draw the people to us that are usually a few steps behind us and whatever it has happened to us in our lives so that we have a, a better ability to help them. And I find that a lot. <laughs> you find it odd. That's an interesting choice. I find it a lot, not odd. Well, you find it a lot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I might be odd, but I find it a lot. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, frequently that's good. I, I, I can buy into that. That's okay. Good. Yeah. Um, but Anne Marie, uh, when she was talking about earlier about uh, the way that she goes within to clear space and, and so on and so forth, th that kind of that, that's something you and I've talked about a lot. We've talked about a lot, a lot with guests as well. But you in particular, I mean, I think about it in terms of your own career path. You have to do that essentially with because you work in an IT field as well. You have to work with other people who are much more IT than you are. You have yeah. to create that kind of space with them in order for them to feel comfortable working with you yeah and it can be exhausting just mm. having all these different personalities that are completely different to yours different interests whereas it's not my comfort zone whereas it is for them usually so yeah it, it's it's using every other skill I have in the book mm. to try and communicate with people and yeah it so this is something day. everybody needs to learn I mean it's, yeah. it's valuable for a coach invaluable for a coach no doubt mm. about that but really this is a skill everybody needs to learn no matter pretty much anything that they do in life. If you're interacting with other people, you need the skill. Yeah, yeah. even your family, those those listening skills oh, that Ali yeah. mentioned, um, making people feel valid, heard, it's all crucial stuff in our day-to-day -day lives. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so when you're working with uh, clients, Arlene, I imagine that what you're also doing is you're sharing with them these same kinds of tools so they can apply them in their own lives. Yeah, it depends on whether I'm working with them on a coaching or a mentoring basis. If it's mentoring, it's more about spiritual development and stuff oh, like okay. that. Um, if it's coaching, it, it's going to come through energetically because also I, you know, I might share an intuition or an insight or make an offering to them and they can take it or leave it. But often that will open a door to a new way of um, handling a situation or problem, a new way of looking at their life that they hadn't considered before. Mm -hmm. So that's more how it works with coaching. Okay, but let's go into the mentoring side. Um, I, I, first of all, I like the way that you distinguish between them, but talk about that yeah. some more. The mentoring, what I want to share with Anne Marie, there's really one important thing with mentoring that I would share with you. And that mm -hmm. is that anytime, and this is for if you're a podcaster as well, or you're, you're dealing with people and you have family and people you love, which most everyone does, is that anytime someone thinks of you, you think of them you establish an energetic connection with them. Mm. And all the yeah. people that you're genetically connected to, your family, anyone you've had um, a personal sexual relationship with, you have energetic connections that are there for your whole life. And also right. because we're in physical bodies, we are energetically connected to the mind of humanity. Now, if you look at the mind of humanity with men and women on this planet, in many places, <laughs> it's not the most clear or loving place. So it's really important to learn how to cleanse and clear your energy field. And so if you're having a situation, um, this is what I would mentor you about, it, uh, with um, connecting with all these IT people, you know, mm -hmm. what you can do is um, before and like during or even after you have any sort of conversation, just visualize this golden cylinder coming down around your body and it's cutting any energetic connections that are coming from you to them or them to you that are not about love. The loving ones will stay. You're cutting them and you're clearing them with golden healing light. That's the golden healing light stays where 
um, those energetic connections were because what's happening, you're probably intuitive and empathic and sensitive. sensitive. So these people's energy um, is impacting you. And so right. when we do that, then we're much more able to work with people and help them than if we're not doing this kind of energetic clearing. That's that's good advice because that is that why probably by the end of the day I'm feeling quite frazzled. frazzled. Yeah, and and one thing that you can also do that I do at the end of the day if I'm dealing with a lot of people or I've been out in public, um, I take like a three minute hot shower, um, and I flood the, the shower with what's called the universal violet flame, which transmutes and transforms fear into love. It's just violet light, and um, so I'm cleansing and clearing my energy field. I'm washing away the day, uh, just two or three minutes put on some clean clothes and it feels like I have a fresh lease on life because even if we're doing things to protect ourselves, we're still going to be impacted by um, what's happening around us and, the, and who we're interacting with. It, we can't mm. help it. And so we have to have ways to cleanse and clear ourselves after as well. Oh, you can go out in nature, nature, mother nature is so incredibly healing. Um, you know, she's like flooded with divine love and wisdom and power and we can tune into her and, allow her to love her and love, we love her. And it's very, very healing as well. And Maria, did you just notice what I noticed that a moment ago, she said, it's just this one little woo thing that she does. And then she just gave us <laughs> <a little laughs> that, that that little wee bit a woo. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not, it's, it's, it's in the same package, but there's a lot in there. Um, but yeah, I really love to help people that are out there helping other people, especially, and, or maybe they're, there's somewhere like in, because I was, um, for the first 12 years of my practice, I did divorce and family law and child custody cases. And um, I was also, um, what do you call it, a, a guardian ad litem for the court. So I represented the children that were in dysfunctional families. Wow. Yeah. And this before I had any of these skills. And I just didn't, I was a, I was a puddle on the floor. Um, but I, so I love to share this kind of stuff with other people because it's so simple and it changes our experience. Especially since you went through that experience of, of working with those people. I mean, that that is very draining, what you just described. Um, and the legal and that, system. Oh, not just the legal system, but the whole state system where, you know, yeah. where all the, the areas are that the state touches. I mean, one of my other co-hosts, Joel Elston, is also a life coach and a former psychotherapist who has worked extensively in helping um particularly young boys caught in the foster care system who are considered unadoptable. So kind of dealing with the same kinds of issues you were just describing. And I mean, it's, it's very um, life supporting for him, life, life affirming to do that, but it's also draining. It's both. And you, you have to have the right um, defenses. I guess there's no other way to put it. You have, you have to have the, the right, defenses in place in order to make sure you come out of it whole because you're going to go through a lot of crap just helping people of that kind of, you know, yeah. who are going through those kinds of things. Yeah, because when people are at their worst, lots of times they're projecting us, you know, they're, they're doing the best they can, but they're at the worst that they are, they're at. Yeah. And so I didn't have those skills. And if I had had those skills, I might have had more ability to stay in that field. I ended up going into commercial law. I just was like, I'm done. Mm. You know, it, I had a few things happen where it just wasn't pleasant. You know, a client, yeah. a client sued me, a uh, judge um, dropped out of the case um, just because an attorney said something mildly that there might be something that he might have a conflict, like when the case was almost over. And it's just a, it's a, it's a difficult situ situation, a difficult system to be a part of. Mm, yeah. And when you're, when you're an attorney, you're a part, you're, you're connected to the group of all other attorneys oh, yeah. energetically and the whole court system. That's a great yeah. point. People don't, don't think about that because we think about the adversarial nature of, of the court system, but everything really is all connected energetically. And there's a great example of it. Yeah. And so we can flood all that. That's why I flood all men and women with the uh, violet flame, their, their mind, the psyche of all humanity, um, men and women, because we're connected. And um, there's a lot of stuff out there that's just not appropriate to have in our energy field because it's not about love. It's very interesting to me to hear someone with a, a legal background, an attorney, talking in these terms. This is not, I mean, you're, you're not the typical type A attorney. <laughs> you don't fit the usual, <laughs> you don't fit the usual stereotype, let's put it that way, you know, and, and I love it. I love the fact 
that this is who you are and this is who you've become. But it, it, it still kind of makes me wonder, like, that must have been stressful to just go through that career. I mean, everything you're describing says that your career has been not only successful, but it's been fulfilling. You've, you've gotten so much value out of it. But man, there's also got to be the other side to it because you're dealing with all these people you're connected to who are for you know, better or for worse, largely type A personalities. And there's that's a tough personality to deal with. Let's be honest. It really is. <laughs> I have I'm one of what am I I have to say this. I am a recovering type A personality. You're recovering, okay. <laughs> I'm a recovering type A personality. <laughs> Do, do they have their own 12-step group? I'm just curious. I don't know. I wish they would when I was younger. <laughs> but yeah. Well, all right. Let's talk. Let's go down that track. That's an interesting track. Let's go down that one for a few minutes. Um, talk about what perhaps what you were like before you went down your current track and, and how how it played out. How, how did that type A side of yourself that you are, quote, recovering from, unquote, play out? And how did you transition away? Um, to the point where you are now. I got a lot of mentoring along the way because I was really, really anxious, you know, and I guess the way I parlayed in the bottom line to be an attorney is once I became a partner in this firm, we had two associates, they did all the court work. Mm -hmm. So I was on the phone negotiating settlements. I was a person that, which I love to do, I love to work with people. I was the marketer, you know, to really help to market ourselves and get ourselves out there. Mm -hmm. I got involved in a lot of um, organizations where we could get business, but we were around some really cool people and got to go to interesting places. So the way I kept my sanity for so long as an attorney is to find a way not to do what most attorneys do, which is, you know, go to court and, you know, be in very more stressful situations. It was still stressful. Because mm -hmm. as an attorney, there's always more to do. It it never ends. Mm -hmm. It never ends. So, yes, I was much more anxious. And I guess all the mentoring I did, uh, how I received mentoring and some coaching um, really, really helped me. And when I went to the Transformational Holistic Counseling course, I counseled other people. They counseled me. Now, I got it from Australia, so I can't practice it in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But it was really a very healing thing. So the coaching and the mentoring and the meditation that I trained in helped to bring that stress level down so that I could function. But it was a, it was a daily thing that I had to deal with because I was, I was immersed in it and I'm pretty empathic and sensitive and all those kind of woo woo things. And um, it was really difficult not to be mowed over by it. So um, yeah. I'm glad I had the courage to do it. Me too. I don't know if I would ever in another life do it again. <laughs> but it was a good experience, and I, I'm glad I got the learning from it as well. Yeah, I'm still trying to connect that in my brain. On the one hand, type A personality. On the other hand, empathic. That's a tough combination. Actually, I used it to my advantage because um, when, when the commercial business that we were doing, we were helping businesses collect their debts. And so I was on the phone with a lot of people that were business people that were stressed out to the max, and they had dealt with collection ag agencies and all sorts of things where people had disrespected them. Mm -hmm. And so I felt that part of my mission as an attorney was to teach, was to treat them with dignity and respect. You know, oh. if they wouldn't work with us, we were going to sue them, but I, or if we already sued them, we could still settle with them. But I did my best to, you know, to treat people that way. I mean, they were obnoxious to me and they were crossing the line as, as what was not acceptable behavior in my realm. I would, become really firm. But my general thing was I'm going to find the best in people and treat them with dignity and respect and actually worked. Um, so that's how that's I awesome. guide that, yeah. you know, in the practice of law. Yeah. It's, I mean, you're right. It's it's not something that we would typically associate with the legal circle, but I can see how that would be very effective mm. precisely because it's so unusual. It's not the way that kind of, of agency takes place. Normally that agency is more the type A approach and you were doing a non-type a approach that's like whoa wait a minute you're a you're an attorney really <laughs> it didn't seem like it didn't fit you know I'm, I'm sure that actually helped because you broke the stereotype you broke the mold yeah yeah so that was my goal as an attorney and um yeah that was that was that made it enjoyable you mm -hmm. know because i really did love working with people you know some people were just you know jerks but that's life that's part of it yeah. and um it, it made it something that I felt that I could be of service in this realm. 
I'm also thinking about, I, I have a, a gardening service, gardening and maintenance service, a team of 10 people working for me. And uh, one of the things we make it a practice to do is to fire customers we don't like, um, which we can kind of do. We can get away with doing that. Um, so as a result, you know, like 95% of our customers are wonderful and the other 5% are cycling out really quickly. Um, but that's not something you can really do in your profession, I mean, you, you couldn't really cycle out the, the customers you didn't want. That you, the the ones who were you know the a holes, the ones who were the jackasses. You you couldn't do the same thing. It was you had to do the collection work anyway. How how did you how did you get yourself to stay in that track? That's that's a tough track. Well, attorneys do have a hammer. You know, I, we can sue you. We can take you to court. We can attach your assets if you have any. So if they didn't want to work with me, if they were rude and obnoxious or whatever it was. We had the hammer. And so that did make it easier. And um, my partner also had the ability to be a little bit more of the tough guy um, <laughs> if I didn't, you know, feel comfortable. So, so with you it, were the but... good cop and he was the bad cop. <laughs> Not all the time. I could be the bad cop. <laughs> I told you I was recovering. I'm not, you know, I, I do have <laughs> no qualities. But I, I love the fact that even in those situations, a little bit of kindness and a little bit of compassion is, yeah. is sometimes all people need and it can make a difference to them. But building that relationship with you to therefore work with you to get your money back rather than have to go these hardball ways. And I just yeah. can't think of many situations in the world where a little kindness and compassion won't make a huge difference. It does. It does make a huge difference, you know. Um, so that was a really good learning experience that that was possible. I just sort of intuitively tried it. And some people it worked with some people who didn't. But like I said, but um, it did make the practice of law for me feel like I was there for a reason. And there was some reason at 15 that I chose to do this. And um, I did get a lot of out of that. It was a good experience. Yeah. Very cool. I like that. So we have a sense of how you transitioned away from your type A personality of the past to the the one that uh, how would you describe it is in recovery today. <laughs> yeah, it's not totally gone. There's there's seeds of it in there. It can it can get it's a little. It's still there. It shows up occasionally. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. I'm not I'm not saying I'm perfect by any stretch of imagination, <laughs> but I have made steps forward. That's a good. But thing. surely there's some good things to be in a type A as well. I mean, I don't really know much oh. about it. It's not something that we say over here, but you know. It's good to have all these different personalities, surely. <laughs> well, I'm, I can be really organized. I can get things done on the ground. Um, so I do have that strength. And that is, I guess, maybe a little bit type A. I don't know. but Well, I think there is a big thing. with. I mean, we're, we're kind of making fun of it. But the, the real great strength of type A is persistence. Type yeah. A will not back down under any circumstance. It will the, That personality will keep going and going. And, and that's the most important thing of any kind of success just persisting, just you keep going after it and keep going after it until finally, if nothing else, at least the other side or the other person you're dealing with or whatever it is kind of gets worn down like, okay, all right, we'll just, we'll, we'll go your way. I'm just done with this. <laughs> That's yeah, I feel like the song, you know, know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just have to fold them and go, this one is just not working, baby. Mm -hmm. We're done with it, you know, and walk away. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And of course you, you're still walking away holding the hammer. So there's also that side of it too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not always holding a hammer. <laughs> yeah, they always, they, they always, uh, uh, the, the visual representation is holding the scales adjusted. They don't actually show the hammer, do they? It's kind of like hidden beneath the robe <laughs> or something. <laughs> oh dear, I let out a big secret of the legal profession. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the secret's out, too late. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit more about uh, um, what, what you're doing now with the, the clients, because you, you you describe the two different areas that you're working with. Uh, let, let's let's go to the women's side specifically. You're mm -hmm. trying to help women achieve that that balance in their life. Talk. Let's talk a little bit more about that balance. What what are you trying to to purvey to them? Well, I'm not trying to purvey anything because I I view it as as I'm I'm partnering with them, partnering with them and walking alongside of them. Okay. So it depends on what they need and what they're looking for. And as I mentioned before, there's no such thing as getting there. You know, we're always going through change. Things are always moving around. What can be a real crisis one week is not the next. And we just have to find some ways to um, heal from the inside out so that we have the ability to deal with what's going on in our life. It doesn't mean the challenges aren't going to be there. It doesn't mean the obstacles and the difficult moments are not going to be there. But we find ways to be 
you know, more patient, more kind with ourselves. And that's, I guess, where that inner critic, inner coach comes into play, because I feel that women particularly, maybe I'm biased here, um, we are really good at helping other people. So if my friend came to me and she told me all the things that were going on in her life, where her life was out of bounds with the kids, with the work, with the partner, with everything, I would be able to hold a space of compassion for her. Mm -hmm. I would be able to nurture her and support her and champion her. So my goal as a coach, um, or if I'm mentoring them, is to get them to be able to turn that around and give it to themselves. You know, it's okay. There's no reason to experience guilt because I'm taking care of myself and I'm loving myself. And so we need to have ways every day to fill our cup up with love because as a as a woman, if our cup is not filled up with love, we're going to have nothing to give to anybody else. Mm. And we're going to get frustrated and angry. And the, the kind of person that we turn into is not who we particularly like. So that's like a, the foundation there of working with them that, you know, it, it's, it's loving and kind to take care of yourself because otherwise you have zero to give to other people. And that's what women want to do. And, and, and that is OK. And here's some of the tools we're going to work with so that you can take care of yourself. Yeah, it's an odd thing. In order to give something to somebody else, you have to have it first. Yeah, and we don't think about that, you know? We just give, 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 give. I mean, my mom did that. I mm -hmm. I mean, I remember being a teenager, and um, at that time, it's just my brother. I mean, my little brother was born when I was 12, and I was like, Mom, go shopping for clothes. You, you need some new clothes. <laughs> you buy them all the time for Mark and me. You are not buying yourself. They're in shambles. They're not in style. Go get yourself some clothes. And she was like, what? <laughs> you know, we just have, we're trained to be a certain way. And yeah, we're, we're breaking those stereotypes, but it's still a work in progress. So those societal trainings, they, they run deep and, and, and they run back generations. So they can be pretty challenging to overcome for sure. Um, yeah. But I don't mind some of the ways that they play out today that you see them, that, that you're, you're finding yourself helping clients to transition away from by changing their mindset. Um, well, it can, I mean, like, like I said, it comes in a variety of things. Sometimes women, you know, they, they have a kid and there's been a couple of them that have been like, you know, in the public defender's office as attorneys, you know, there's a lot of attorneys I work with and they just, it's too much, you know, they have a young child or maybe they have two and that's a very demanding thing. You're going to trial. And so some things, what they're doing is they're transitioning like into the appellate level. So they're just writing briefs for court. Or some of them have been in the big corporate world and there's not a lot of leeway and they've gone into private practice, maybe with a small group or even for themselves. They are making decisions so that they have the ability to have more balance because sometimes in the system that they're in, there's not that ability. There's there's rules and regulations. I mean, other countries are so kind with, with what they set up for women and, and stuff like that. Our, the United States is not so great at that. And, you know, so you lose talent and they go to other places, but give, give us an example so that, so that we can fully understand what you're talking about there. What is it specifically about the U.S. system that that reinforces what you're talking about? Well, as far as like having child care on board, giving them um, vacation time, giving them um, like paid leave. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of countries have like Europe, what do they have the whole like August, all of August. They have much greater times of paid leave. They have husbands and wives or both partners being able to get paid leave when someone is born. Mm -hmm. um, those are a few of the things. And, and there a lot of times if you're in corporate America as a mother, you still have the same responsibilities as anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so you have school and doctor's appointments and extracurricular activities and a lot of stuff to juggle where there's not a lot of support in place for women with that. Maybe individual companies give it, but on the whole, it's not there. Mm -hmm. And so you have to figure it all out yourself and it's getting more and more expensive. So there's a lot, there's a lot of stress from all different angles on that with women. And there's also this feeling, I mean, I was talking to a client and she was really upset because her son was, she couldn't go to all of his, um, I think she was in soccer or baseball or something games. And, you know, he mentioned that to her and she's crying in the car on the way to work. And, you know, it sort of rips your heart out that you cannot be everything for everybody. And you really can't be as a working mother. Um, so those are some examples. Mm -hmm. And and men are stepping in more, but it's still primarily a women's domain. And, you know, things are changing. That's awesome. But these are some of the things that, 
that people deal with. And I'm not an expert in how men experience it, on the other hand, and maybe there are a lot more, a lot more men that, that take a more active role and experience the same things. But that's just a little taste of, of what it feels like because you know, as a woman, you're, you know, you carry these kids, you yeah. love them, you know, fathers do too, but there's this thing of what you want to be everything to everybody to keep everybody happy. And, and that's not possible, you know, if because then we don't take care of ourselves. And so it's kind of like a balancing act of learning where you come to that place of equanimity. It's not a perfect, but it's, it's, it's kind of a work in progress. And it does help if we have a tribe to work with. You know, if we have a women's group or friends that also have kids. So it's not just on us or we have our parents nearby. I mean, those all are huge helps because it really does take a tribe to raise a child. Um, but everyone doesn't have that. Yeah, that's a key point right there, because everybody, a lot of people don't have that. And not just in this country either. I mean, right. we, we, tend, we tend to emphasize that, you know, the diversity and so forth. So so there's more of that perhaps than there are in other countries. But I mean, Anne-Marie, I mean, you tell me how much stuff like that is going on in the UK where the, where you don't have the, the same formal family organizations that would have existed, say, three or four generations ago. I mean, I think in the UK, I, I think it's getting much better for working mothers. I think we're... we're country that's really focusing on mental health in the workplace which helps and we do have paid holidays and things and rights as parents um, and we do give that to the men as well the fathers as well so that does make a difference because you know it's actually a lot of pressure for a, a bloke to go out and you know they're, they're providers and they've got to work hard to bring in all the income and actually that's a lot when you've got to come home to a newborn or a young child you know there's a lot of stress that's going on there um, but certainly I know I know the company that I work for, I could not work full time if it wasn't for a company that supported that family balance. So that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And it, shows, oh, gosh, yeah. It, it shows just how much society has transitioned in the past mm -hmm. hundred years. I mean, a hundred years ago, that wouldn't have existed. No, no, not at all. But I can also relate to Arlene, even though I've got that more flexibility, if I need to go and do the school run and like, work different hours and that, that that's fine they support me with that there's no questions I don't even have to ask um but then I do come home and on a bad day I'm failing as a mum I'm failing as a wife I'm failing as a employee you know you just you just it's just a lot and I can see yeah. why some people get completely burnt out and I was talking to a friend the other day and literally just saying you know I, I now work out in the mornings I get up earlier but that's my me time. And that's made just that little hour a day has made such a difference because you're right. You need to be that little bit selfish, look after yourself in whatever way that may be. And it fills your pot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because if you, I mean, you just go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Then. I mean, you, we have to stop calling that selfish, you know? I've, I used to work with people in the um, community and when they said I feel really selfish, I'm like, selfish isn't necessarily a bad thing. That's okay. Because you're right, it shouldn't be something that we feel bad for. Yeah, thank goodness we're selfish. If we weren't selfish, we wouldn't be alive. Well, it's like on an airplane, you know, they say to the parents, put your oxygen on first. Mm. To make sure you're okay, so then you can look after your kids and in so many ways of life that should be and not just your kids your family your friends whatever it may be yeah i think we need to let go of this idea that selfish is somehow a bad thing because it's not and, really and the not. Thing, i think what confuses people is they see say they see someone who behaves in a way that is completely indifferent or even antagonistic to somebody else and they say well they're being behaving selfishly and actually, what, the way they're behaving has really nothing to do with being selfish. It has to do with being basically angry or or striking out mm -hmm. at somebody else. There's nothing selfish about that. That's just harming somebody else. I think we need and to also, separate the two. You're also teaching other people. You're showing other people how to put themselves first. Yeah. Not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. Well, that's true for everybody who comes onto this show, isn't it? All of our guests are people who have found ways that they, they've they learned in their own lives to um, find improvements, to find ways of growing themselves, find ways to solve things that previously seemed insoluble. And so they want to share it with everybody else. That's the nature of being a giver. 
Yeah. Mm. Female, I don't care who you are. I mean, that's just part of what being a giver is. And as we give, so we receive, you know, because when we we really get something and we share it with other people, what comes back for me feels like so much more than I'm giving out. Mm. It just feels amazing, you know, to the, the feeling you get from other people, the love, the connection, and just the amazing to watch them change and grow in a way that is really helpful. So it's, it's this beautiful cycle that happens. I'm sure you guys experience this a lot. Mm. Yeah, well, it's a big part of what happens just here on the show. Um, one of the things that happens for me a lot, I've talked about this with Anne-Marie and, and other co-hosts numerous times, is getting people onto the show whose perspective is different from my own, which is basically everybody. <laughs> There's nobody who has the same perspective I have. <laughs> it's just part of being a human being. But it's a cool thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And it took me quite a few years to kind of get used to the fact that there are going to be people who have very different perspectives from me. And as I've noted numerous times in the last five or six years, they're the ones I learned the most from, sometimes to my chagrin, but they really are because they have so much more to teach me. <laughs> yeah. The ones who I agree with, they don't have as much to teach me. I mean, I love them. They're some of my best friends in the world, but they just don't have as much to teach me. They can't because we have very similar perspectives. Yeah. And it, 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 what you're also describing is that <clears throat> what you're doing is you're connecting into the similarities mm. on a very fundamental level that you have with humanity and with the people that are on your show. Mm -hmm. And the differences are okay. They're like, you know, flavors are different icings on different cakes, but right. we, we all have that those similarities, the people that you're drawing to you, you know, on this podcast, and you're appreciating that. Yeah. Appreciating it is an understatement. Yeah. I mean, I've again, that's something else I've stated over and over again. I get so much energy from doing this show. I mean, it's almost a sin how well I do because of that, just because of how much energy I get out of doing this. People ask me, well, is, is this your career? No, it's not my career. It's something that I do because I enjoy it, but I wouldn't trade it for anything because of that. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. That kind it of connection is. is absolutely huge. In fact, I wish there was more ways for me to share that with other people. That, that's something I give a lot of attention to. Like, how can I get other people to have this kind of experience? Because, I mean, we're experiencing it right now. So we have that, that direct experience. Even somebody listening doesn't have the same experience. I mean, it's a good experience. Don't get me wrong. Otherwise, they wouldn't be listening. But the energetic exchange that happens when we have these conversations is, what, five or six times greater it's, it's just massively large. And, and so I keep thinking about all the different ways that I wish that I could somehow just pass it to somebody else. So that's why I'm always interested with somebody like you who comes onto the show. And you, you work directly with people, helping them in this case to help figure out their, their work-life balance and so forth. And in doing so, you are sharing that level of energy that I'm talking about. Because it's because you work one-on-one. -on -one. When you work one-on-one, -on -one, you know what that's like. There's a very large energy flow that takes place. So, so you deal with that daily. Yeah. And I would also, I disagree a little bit because like, if I listen to a podcast that's really uplifting or I go to some place or have an experience where I'm watching two people interact and, you know, I'm not really a part of it, but I'm, I'm witnessing it. There is something really amazing with that too. And okay. that is really uplifting, you know, as, as well. Well, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I'm, I'm one who actually doesn't listen to much in the way of other people's podcasts, I, I do my own and I just don't pay attention to the others. So maybe that's just my lack of perspective. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I do know how much power is involved in it. So yeah, absolutely. The more that, that a listener is able to draw energy out of this, I love that. I'm, I'm yeah. glad whenever that can happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and when you're working with clients, that's what you want them to do too. I mean, that's part of the process for learning these, these life skills that you're talking about is drawing energy and learning how to draw that energy, not just within, but also your, your connections with other people. That, and the primary connection in that case is your connection with them as, as coach or mentor. You're, you're providing an energetic connection back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really important with people to be really um, patient, kind, and tolerant. I mean, with ourselves first and foremost, and with them, because mm -hmm. sometimes they go around in circles. You know, they they get they have a, a realization and they don't apply it, and they come back and they have the same realization next week. But looking at myself, how many years I did that before the penny dropped, it's really important to step back and allow them to go through that process. Mm -hmm. Because when they're really ready to get it, they will. But if we hold that um, judgment-free space, it's patient, kind, and tolerance for themselves and for us. Then, then the magic can happen when it's ready to. And that's a beautiful thing. As usual, when we have these conversations, I'll look up and I say, oh, 
the hour is almost up once again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, so many good things happening here. That's what always makes it hard at the end. But there are a couple of things we need to do before we part company. First and foremost, someone who wants to reach out and talk to you and perhaps consider working with you. How do they find you? Well, um, if you're in our neck of the woods in the U.S. or Canada, my phone is 720-936-2634. Text me. That's the best way to get a response. Or you can go to my website, Jewel Consultancy, J-E-W-E-L, like the, the big diamond, consultancy.com. And you can connect with me there. You can go to LinkedIn under Arlene Cohen Miller. I'm there. So those are three good ways that, um, that you can connect with me anytime, anyplace. Okay, good. And I'll make sure that we'll include a link to the website too to make it easy for people to find that. So that will be part of the show notes as we try to do it on a regular Thank basis. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Um, second thing I, I wanted to ask you about, you, you mentioned before we got started uh, that you had something special you wanted to offer to listeners today. And I, I wanted to bring that out. So yeah, talk great. about that for a second. So just mention Walt or Anne-Marie and LOA and um, let to me and you will get a free discovery session with me. It's like a 45 minute session. We can explore what's going on for you. There's no obligation. It's just my gift for um, for you guys because you have me on this podcast and I um, feel strongly to give back to your audience in that way. So you can connect with me in the ways I already shared. Uh, and if you're interested, I'm, I'm happy to, to give that to you. Fantastic. So thank you very much on behalf of our listeners. We appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you. So now we're down to two more pieces of business we have to complete. <laughs> Um, first one, I'm going to go to Anne Marie on, um, and this is something that I've been doing for a few years now. My my co-hosts are are fabulous. I mean, you've had the chance to meet one of them. Um, I have three of them that I work with regularly, and every single one of them has amazing skill sets that they bring to the table here. One of the skill sets that they all three have in common is the ability to take the conversation that we just had and find the the perfect way to tie it all together and put a bow on top. And Anne Marie is as good as anybody at that. So now that I put all the pressure on her, Anne-Marie, <laughs> now you're going to tie it together today. <laughs> oh, I think because I'm a core cool customer, there was a lot of really good advice that I took from there. Yes. Um, but I think, I think the main things that I thought were brilliant were protecting your own energy around other people and, you know, giving good energy to other people. And also something that Arlene said is, is getting the help and working with a mentor. Because I just know from myself that my whole journey took off and my whole self-development and the life changes that I've had. I've been from working with coaches, the experts in the field. So I think that was really good advice is don't go alone and take that time for yourself. Yeah, yeah. very important. Good stuff. All right. So we're down to the last piece. The last piece is one of my favorite things. I have a lot of fun doing this. Um, but I discovered something, Arlene, a few years ago. I discovered something that was kind of was kind of like this empty hole that we'd all been kind of ignoring for years uh, because we're now living in the 21st century. You've been doing, you told us earlier, you've done what, 22 podcasts now. Um, and, and I'm sure that's not the only kind of outreach you do. You probably do social media and all the other you know usual stuff that people do. And when you're doing that, you're putting out all these cool hacks because we asked you to ask, you know, give us some hacks and you're giving us interesting advice and ideas and so forth. And you're sharing it with people you've never met, never seen, never will meet, never will see. And I noticed we don't get credit for that. So Arlene, on behalf of those people you've never met, never seen, never will meet, never will see, who you've been helping in ways you don't even know about, on their behalf, thank you for what you're doing because you are making a difference in this world. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. That's very kind. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, we need to recognize that more. So that's why I like to do that. So thank you for joining us sharing your expertise and what you've been doing. It sounds exciting. It sounds like you've been having a good time. I hope you keep doing it. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And thank you to our podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye.